Hey, hey, hey guys, it's Old Man G here, back again with another video for Red Devil Studio. Man, it feels like it's been ages since I uploaded a video. Hope you all like the new introduction. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Red Devil Studio. Follow us on Twitter at WeAreUnitedX. Let's push on to get to 1,000 subscribers. Thanks to everyone who's been supporting the channel thus far. Um, so let's get on to business right now. Let's just talk about... Um, um, the people in the image um, will start with left to right, to be honest, because that's where the news is. Um, there's a lot to get through, um, so this might be a slightly longer video, but we'll just see how things go. Um, so the first one is obviously Dybala. Now, obviously, I posted a video beforehand about um, Dybala to Lukaku potential swap. Um, that seems to have sort of grown in track. To be honest, initially, I thought it was a bit of a joke, if I'm honest, um, but apparently Dybala's agent... Um, is in is in London now. They're trying to negotiate, um, but I think the big issues seem to be um, Dybala's wage demands, um, and also recent news reports about the fact that Dybala thinks that um, going to United will be a step backwards, and that's what um, the Telegraph, the UK newspaper, I'm actually sort of reporting. You know that it's not just about the money, but actually the prospects of playing in the Europa League is a bit. You know, does he want to really be a part of Oli's project? Um, for me, this kind of just really shows just how how United have fallen, really, in the last six years. Where, you know, you just see today the signing of Nicolas Pepe to Arsenal. And it's just kind of like, it. you know, when we're talking about power shift, about how Man City, yes, they spent our money, yes, they got there, but they won titles, they're playing with football. And the fact that, you know, there was a time when players would have loved, would have begged to come and play for Manchester United because of of the dominance of what they achieved on the progress. You know, right now, it just looks like Manchester United are just essentially, for a lot of clubs, a mid-table team um, with a lot of money. And that's it. You know, the prestige, the, the passion, the, you know, the United, the history, it just seems to just not really interest. And and to be honest, you could argue, do we want that type of play at our club in the first place if we want to build, if we want to go back to those days again? No. But I just think it's a bit sad, you know, that a lot of players have turned off coming to, yes, I appreciate that we're not winning the Europa League, but even still, there would have still been players who would have wanted to, you know, back to play for United, irrespective of it, because, because of the nature of Manchester United, you know, and if we look at our rivals, you know, you've got obviously Enden Bele going to Tottenham, you know, Rodrigo going to, uh, to City, obviously Liverpool haven't made any signs, but, you know, they don't really need to, but they, they, they could have the pickle litter, to be honest. And now Nicolas Pepe going to Arsenal, they're not even in the Europa League, uh, sorry, in the Champions League. You know, so, you know, the fact, it's getting to be quite a frustrating window, to be honest. And even if we do sign Dybala, there's just this sinking ceiling, uh, feeling in me that, you know, is Dybala really here because he wants to be here? Or is it because Juve just didn't want him, there was no ways to go, the Lukaku deal sounds quite interesting, you know, they want to push that, um, and he had another options, you know, and are we going to be in a scenario where you have another Di Maria, and where we have Alexis Sanchez and Dybala, um, both whom, um, well, okay, South American, Alexis Sanchez is Chilean, and Dybala is Argentinian, you know, but can decide, we're not, we'll take our we're not interested, and, and that's it, and we, we can't have that United, especially in a position that I would argue, to be honest, isn't actually a priority position, in fact, you know, in a video probably later tonight, I'm going to probably do another um, Manchester United Transfer Crisis Part 2 live stream. So stay tuned for the live stream. It'll be like Friday night, Friday night live stream. Um, we'll have it at um, half seven, guys. Half seven, stay tuned in. Where we'll be doing another Manchester with a week to go, Manchester United Transfer Crisis Part 2. Uh, and I'll be talking just about how I think this whole Dybala thing is a distraction. Um, and the reality is that it's not a position that we need to strengthen. And it seems that we're going further and further away from the position that we do need to strengthen, which puts us on next, uh, quite conveniently to the other two players that we're going to just talk in the middle of this image, um, Harry Maguire and Koulibaly. Um, so latest on Harry Maguire is that like um, he's been left basically out of the um, Leicester squad actually for their friending with Atlanta due to this ongoing uncertainty over his, his, his future. That's what the Telegraph is actually reporting now. Um, clearly... And Maguire wants to leave. He's held talks with Leicester City manager today. Um, you know, um, yes, okay, before when he was ill, but it, there's clearly a desire for Maguire to, that he wants to leave Leicester City. He wants to come to Manchester United. 
Um, I don't think it was part of the kit release as well. So, what, so word on the street is that he wants to come. The issue is the price. And the reality is that, you know, Leicester City, do, he's, got, he's on a four-year contract and Leicester City do not need to budge. They do not need to budge at all. And they will not accept anything less than 85 million. You know, with add-ons, potentially 90 million. So the question is, are you all happy and prepared to pay 90 million for Harry Maguire? At this point in the transfer window, I would say yes, because we really need to solidify our defence. Eric Bailly is now injured for, I think, four to six months, is it? I think. So, you know, we don't have a choice. Essentially, our defenders are Lindelof, Smalling, Jones, and Rojo, potentially, if he's not injured. If he's injured... You know, we've got those three and probably, okay, Axel Twansiby uh, Twan can come in. You know, we, we need another centre-back. Um, and because of that injury, I just think that, you know what, we we, we don't have a choice here. Um, we've got to pay it. Um, and the question is, will United actually pay? And I put a Twitter poll on, I think maybe tonight, and just say, like, will will United actually pay £90 million, um, well, in add-ons, but certainly eight, at least £85 million for Harry Maguire? And because it looks like, I don't think United look like they're going to go over that. They're trying, but I'm not sure of how much of a choice. Um, I think the Maguire one is watch this space. I'm sure we've tabled a bid for, for near around that, but Leicester City just are not going to budge at all. And this signing would make him the most expensive defender. And I've been put a lot of pressure on him. That's what people need to think, realise, you know, £90 million. Pounds. Yes, we're desperate, but it's going to put a lot of pressure and expectation on Maguire, who... You know, he's an alright defender, he's fine, you know, but he's not he's not world class yet, I, I believe. I don't think he's particularly fast either. He, the, the only good thing I would argue would require from a defensive is that he's very good in the air, which is what we've lacked. I mean we need someone a good head of the ball, someone to with clearances. So from that point of view, fair enough. Ninety million, is that the going rate? I don't know. Um and that brings us on to Kuli Bali, because according to I mean, I don't really think that there's much, much, much in this, to be honest. Um, but according to uh, uh, it's a sports, sports link, um, basically, you know, United have basically inquired again about Koulibaly. Which, to be fair, you know, at the start of the transfer window, you know, um, at the start of the transfer window, you know, we were linked with Koulibaly. Uh, soccer link, that's the link. Sorry, guys, put links in the description. We were linked with Koulibaly. Napoli wouldn't budge. To, uh, for, for reportedly any less than I think between 90 and 95 million you know and we were like ah that's just too much we're, we're not interested really or you know we're not going to do it um, and the fact of the matter is that now we're being bullied to pay, spend more or less the same for Harry Maguire so it doesn't make sense so you know this is go around I mean don't get me wrong I know a lot of people would be like oh you know maybe Harry Maguire is better than Kulibali I don't know I personally think Kulibali is better in terms of his experience but also his physicality and also I think he's got the leadership qualities as well um, but for me the big the big 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 thing is that just if we'd known I don't understand this if we'd known that Ham Maguire was going to be this amount 85 90 why didn't we just negotiate with Kulibaly then you know we've been spending weeks trying to pursue Harry Maguire to get less facility to lower down the price you know, when we could have we could have potentially tried to work on both deals, try and work on getting Hammer Quiet or Kulibali. You know, why anyway, I'm not gonna go into this video on a, on a rant. Um that's 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 for Friday, actually. That is definitely for Friday. Um, you know, watch this space, guys, because uh, Tr Manchester United Transfer Crisis part two um is coming up Friday evening live stream. Um that's gonna replace um uh, uh Premier League episode which we're saving for Next week, next week, uh, stay tuned for that. Um, we're going to get a lot of Premier League fans. We're going to basically do a, a, a roundtable discussion just regarding the upcoming season um, with uh, with season starting soon. So, so save that space. Anyway, um, lastly, um, Fernandez. Now, this is where the news gets a bit. It's gone from I would argue from uh, you know good to worse in terms of the the, the picture order. But um, yeah, Fernandez. I mean. Recent reports say that now Tottenham in from him. Worse, Tottenham have sent agents to fly to um, to to Portugal to discuss or phase out the contract for 
for Bruno Fernandes. Now, this is a huge blow. Um, you know, the, the fact that Fernandes, we know, will leave um, Sporting Lisbon for £65 million. You know, we know this. We, we, we know this. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not massive. We know that he'll leave. Um, so the fact that this has been carried by most UK newspapers, by the way, you know, the fact that Tottenham Hotspur have taken up the advantage of United stuttering and have decided, you know what, we're going to fly, I'm going to speak, and we're going to, you know, have, have words um, of Danis is a blow. And potentially game over, to be honest. And, or we're possibly, you know, maybe it adds credence to rumour that United will never, never view Bruno Fernandes as a priority in the first place. We've talked about him so many times, um, but maybe United just generally weren't interested in him. And, the Portu and most of the reports, which came on the Portuguese press, hyping him, linked United, was just adding, you know, sale value to his value so that the head of sports in Lisbon could get into a bidding war with other clubs and United and other teams just didn't take the bait. Um, it's as simple as that. We'll know the truth on the 8th of August. Um, but the reality is that um, it just seems that United are increasing, 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 getting less and less, getting further away from a Bruno Fernandes deal, if, if, if it's going to happen at all. Um, and I think that's, um, that's bad um, because we need a midfielder. Um, Pogba could potentially still leave. With Lukaku gone, we're going to be relying on, uh, you know, Rashford, you know, Marshall, Lingard, Greenwood, you know, who were not bad, but could we get more goals from them? Or potentially Dybala, who's not interested? You know, guys, the reality is that, to be honest, aside from right back, you know, if we just, if we, if we finish the, the window like this, we've gotten, and the likes of Pogba and, and Lukaku leave, we've gotten worse. We've gotten worse. You know, our priority signings, should have been a defensive midfielder, a holding midfielder, or box to box, and a centre back. You know, with a right back. Okay, with you know, but at those first three should have been priorities, and we haven't got, or we haven't dealt with our priorities. So I expect if things stay the same, same way, a difficult season. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for listening. You know, um, I'm posting more videos and updates as well. Please um, like, share, and subscribe to Red Devil Studios. Thanks again for everyone who's supporting this channel. Stay tuned for our live uh, live stream tomorrow where I'll be having another rant. Hopefully there'll be positive news tomorrow, but I really don't hold hold out for, for anything. I'm just, uh, really, guys. Um, keep the faith. <laughs> um, follow us on Twitter again at WeUnitedX. Have a nice evening, guys, and cheers.